the PTL Television Network presents Jim Baker. Christmas City welcome for Jim and Emmy Baker! Hello, Canadians! <laughs> Hello! How y'all doing? Merry Christmas to you! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas from Christmas City! Ho, 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 right? Nice to have you all here. Are you feeling good? Yeah. <clears throat> good. You're looking good today. Yeah. Some audiences just get a mean look. It, I don't know. How many are preachers here? Any preachers? Raise your hand if you're a preacher. They, uh, not ashamed of it. <laughs> no, they look like got, happy preachers. We've got several honey. preachers here. Most preachers are home with their churches because it's Christmas. I think all the congregation should send your pastor to Christmas City yeah. for a week. Right? After Christmas, if not. Christmas City goes all the way through uh, the end of January. But, you know, it, the, the speakers that are here, the preachers that are here, uh, how many have ever had to speak a lot in front of crowds? Anybody here today? It, you know, audiences take on a different personality. They become like a, a personality. And sometimes you walk out and they go, grrr, at you. And I don't know why. I mean, how could a thousand people go grrr at the same time? But, but then you got an audience that is just really warm and friendly. And this is a warm, friendly audience. So this is a nice, they're really, you can, they reach out to you. And it's nice. Hi. Hi, Jim. Tammy made it. I made it. I mean, it, like by the skin of my teeth. And there's not much skin on your teeth. No, there isn't much I skin I woke up this morning with a sick tummy. So I thought, well, if I lay back down, it's Jamie's birthday. And he, oh. got, he woke me up real early to get his presents. See? And so, and so I had a real bad sick tummy, so I went back to bed. I thought, I'll sleep just a couple minutes. My tummy will settle down. I'll feel better. Woke up at 10 minutes to 10, and I'm supposed to be here by 10.30 to practice. I made it. I don't know how I did, but I just kept saying to myself, be calm. Be calm, and you can make it. Well, yeah. <laughs> you need to start sleeping occasionally. Well, you know, we got jet lag because we've been well, in California, and it's three hours know. different. So you lay awake all night. You I don't go to bed till. Three o'clock in and the morning. And we're in Hyper City, let's face it. Yes, yeah. This isn't the quietest Hyper City place here to be. USA. And I, in the last three days, we have a lady who's sitting in the green room. Hi. <laughs> <coughs> She's, that's the green room is where they wait to come on the air, only she refuses to come on the air. <laughs> <coughs> She's a neat lady. She's yeah, a neat she lady. Is. Famous, famous star. Has been here all week. And uh, but we've had, uh, who, who all have we had? We've had Jane Russell this week here. Uh -huh. We've had Pat, Pat Boone here with us this week. We had this very famous lady who's in the green room. Hi again. <laughs> And uh, the Gavin McLeod and Patty yeah. McLeod from the Love Boat. And uh, <laughs> that's all right to say, yeah, we're going, yeah. Come on down. Let's bring him on in. Patty, come on. Gavin McLeod. Come down further. They want us to come closer to the cameras. Can we do no, that? Wasn't really Hi, everybody. Hi. Is she really? That's my girlfriend, Karen. Excuse me. But what? <laughs> you got to. What is this? What is this? Karen's our secretary for the I mean, you just got. I mean, we just got you remarried and got you back together. Let's not uh, talk about these. Yes, right. as, a, as a Christian, you love everyone. <laughs> oh, all right. No, the I reason Tammy love. has a sick tummy is that you party here a lot. <laughs> It's not party, it's fellowship. Well, it's okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's hospitality. Jim, what, what, one o'clock, was it one o'clock in the morning or yeah. 12 midnight, we were all drinking hot chocolate we're out drinking. the yeah, cocoa. Can, can, we, can we just Oh, the after truth? yesterday's yeah. program, now you you're know, talking about we're out drinking. Chef, what? The chef at the Hampton Court knows that we love coconut uh, custard pie. 
So the last time we were here, he, he made a little one didn't have any coconut. So, yeah. he just the, so we came up to the suite last night, and there was a huge coconut custard pie. You so ate we, after it, we left you? you after the hot chocolate, you had coconut pie. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. And uh, that's why I feel so healthy this morning. And Patty was a little under the weather. Well, you know, there's not very many benefits being the president of PTL. No, you, you get to raise all the money. You get to worry about the bills. You know, you get all those wonderful things. But the one thing is, I get to open restaurants that are closed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and last night, Hampton Court was closed, and we opened it. <laughs> and we went in and had hot chocolate, so that mm -hmm. was fun. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. It was cold in the Carolinas last night. We went through and saw the Christmas, Christmas, Christmas lights. Christmas lights. Took everybody yeah. Well, you see, you got to see them every week because they change. That's they change. And the scenes are just fabulous this oh, year. Yeah. We, do we have that uh, Christmas City scenes? They show, you've seen pictures of the lights. But we have individual little scenes around, and we thought it might be fun to see that, and we all went through the tour. The cameras can't show exactly yeah, what it is. You've sure. got to see it in purpose. But right. some of you I know can't come. But by the end of January, try to get here if you can by January 31st, okay? Here they are. Look at this. And Patty's favorite wasn't there. My own personal favorite is the gingerbread little village. Oh, I want oh, those so cute tell, little gingerbread uh, Yeah, tell us what you said. In your, use your voice. What you said when we turned off to look at the, the <laughs> grand, remember? And you were, we were going to miss gingerbread lane. What did you say? I said, oh, daddy, please, daddy, can we go see the gingerbread man? <laughs> <laughs> You should we be out with these two. I'll tell you, it's really I, And then she talks in the Susie voice. And here they are out in the middle. I'm sure anybody at Timeshare last night, you heard the, if you heard the strange noises, it was these two ladies talking. Like, yes, yes, we got to go see the gingerbread. Oh, oh we got to Oh, goody. <laughs> and two grown women acting like that. We were in this mini bus. Can you imagine? I think they thought we were all going to the farm, you know, the funny farm. They had to have us back by midnight. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, the, we had such a nice time. Oh, and, the musical uh, was so great. Oh, your Love musical here that opened last night. Oh. Those of you who haven't seen oh. it, it's well, wonderful. Well, it has such a short run. It only runs through the 25th. It, in fact, oh. it is Christmas night, too, isn't it? Is that correct? Does it run Christmas night for sure? Yeah. Oh, what what labor of love. They're, they're working Christmas Eve yeah. then and Christmas oh. night for dinner. Th well, the people come here. We are so oh, packed at Christmas we week so that there's impressed. not a room in the inn <laughs> in Christmas time, usually. There might be a cancellation. You might get in. We have room tonight, I understand, and that's about it. But uh, uh, <clears throat> mm. you've got to see this thing. Love came down. It's, it started December 17th. It goes through December 25th for Christmas night. And it's such a short run. It had one of the most... Uh, mm moving scenes I have ever seen yeah. on stage it's in my an emotional life. experience yeah. to see that play. when they take the keys and uh, from hell mm. and the keys yeah. of death yeah. and and hell and set the and captive, set the free, captive free it just, it's rises a you up. It just rises you up with the tears and all the emotions you have mm. I could not stand it I listen anybody who's been forgiven your sins it'll drive you I mean it'll it'll just you I sobbed. I couldn't handle it. I thought I was going to interrupt the entire play. I said, Lord, let me get a hold of myself. Yeah. They were into the next scene, and I was still sobbing. I just couldn't, couldn't handle the emotion of it. And then by the end, when they sang Love Came Down, and then they sang Celebrate Jesus. Jen, the, the, the scene that touched me so much is when Mary stood there with her baby and oh. talked to her baby and told her baby, you know, I, I'm your mother, and oh, how I well, hate for you to have to go through what you're going to have to go through. You understand, the first part of the play is so much fun i mean they oh, just carry on and you have a laugh. lot of fun and then by the end it is it is so oh. exciting you're literally wiped out you are. because yeah. you've experienced yeah. every emotion a human being and we had a great meal too didn't we oh, yeah yes. meal was good too. Never yeah forget food down and dinner theater <laughs> 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 but uh, it's dinner theater and and this play and what i saw on stage last night and uh, alfonso was back and he directed mm, well, it god and, bless and, uh, him uh, John Moore wrote a new song called, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, he, he holds the keys? Is it He Holds the Keys? He holds the keys. What is that? He holds the keys. He holds the keys. It's destined to be a great yes, song. It is. I, Tammy wants to make a video of it, yes, and yes. we can show it on oh, the air perhaps yes. one day. But it is so, I felt last night, Gavin McLeod, one of his dreams, and Patty's an actress. Did you, you know that? Broadway and movies and everything else. And their voices. <laughs> their voices now, right? And but their dream is to be able to put Christ into theater and have the church have drama back again. And it's been very difficult. 
And la what we saw last night, I believe, I believe what we saw bringing Christ so real, I, I've never seen anything presented that brought the message of the gospel so real. And that, to me, is what the stage could do oh, and yes. could turn the world around. Hallelujah. And that's why God's getting all you actors and actresses saved. I right. bet sure that's what he's doing. <laughs> our dream too and Gavin we went home last night and Gavin said wouldn't it be great to work with those young people they're all so talented in their own right you know yeah. we've seen them here as soloists part of the PTL singers uh, the one little girl who played Mary I held her baby on Tammy's show one day when you did a show about baby she's so lovely and she was so silly in the beginning she plays this cute little little girl little with pigtails and, and suddenly comes out in the second act and uh, oh just Mary yes uh -huh. as Mary and that song what was it something about Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Oh, mm. well, it has. Anyway, everything. we're encouraging everyone yes. to go see that production. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I hope, it's just a short run. I will hope that be an yeah. annual, uh, an annual thing. I think that after the, yeah. after last night, I think it will be. We're going to put it on the big stage. We want to put year. it back on the big stage so it can have a full production. Because, but if you want an experience, oh. uh, it's a fun take, night. Take, take your handker with, handkerchief with take you. Take the though. whole family. Well, as you said last night, Jim, if you weren't if you weren't saved in that room last you night, would you would be by the time that that <laughs> was over. I, I didn't. I've never seen anything so graphically uh, illustrative of what of what happens, of what God does for us, and what Satan tries to do for us. It was beautiful. Mm. Just tremendous. Just tremendous. We have uh, a lot of folks with us today. We have some singers. And is that right? Don't we have some guest music today? Jeannie? Jeannie was telling me earlier she had a surprise guest. I don't even know who it is. Doug Oldham standing by the wall. Have you been bad? <coughs> been bad. Have to go stand by the wall over there. And are you going to sing something today? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, uh, I, I'm waiting for the right moment to uh, do something. I, I, let me introduce to you uh, a gentleman who I just met yesterday. How many have ever been to Walmart? How many have heard of Walmart stores? You know? Yay! Tammy, say. You can buy anything at Walmart. It's yes. wonderful. You can buy clothes. You can buy anything at Walmart. And you, Tammy does. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We, Tammy do. I do. Well, I do. I do. Tammy, get, you know, you can't get art supplies in Just too many places right. with canvases and all. Tammy and I paint <laughs> kind of like so houses and walls. But but uh, <laughs> but she, she always goes out into Walmart to get the... the uh, uh, surprise! And Tammy told me that that how well yeah, organized yeah, and how much wonderful things. Clean, I found out that they'd have like 170 thousand items or something <laughs> that the Walmart stores mm. carry, and it's one of the greatest success stories in America, really. And, and uh, <laughs> we have with us today the president of Walmart, David Glass, is here in the audience with us. David, stand up here a minute. How you doing, David? Doing fine, and I'm delighted to be here. David and his wife Ruth were in our party last night. I, I don't know if we uh, uh, kind of unnerved you a little bit with all of our carryings on because you're such a dignified gentleman. Well, I, I had a ball. I loved the play. In fact, I echo the sentiments that, uh, that Gavin and Patty have expressed about everything, except I'm still struggling with the voices. I'm not sure that I've adjusted <laughs> to that yet. Oh, dear. <laughs> you know... Uh, Walmart is in the news a lot these days, and if those who business people read uh, In Search of Excellence books and Passion for Excellence, two of the best books in business, by the way, I think. If you haven't read them, you ought to. And uh, Megatrends and some of the things that are happening today. Just about everyone who talks about success, they talk about Walmart. And uh, it is a phenomenon. Uh, you're expecting in this next year to do a few thousand dollars business right uh, we Jim we have uh, across the south principally uh, 860 stores now and next year we'll do about 11 billion dollars in sales you, you say billion 11 billion and that sales. wasn't million 11 billion dollars in sales but I noticed that several in this audience don't shop at Walmart and we need to, <laughs> to work with those uh, with those folks you haven't built one in their town yet but this year what do you say you're gonna build how many in the next year We've been building about 115 to 125 new stores a year. So the company's grown rather rapidly. You're built, you open a store about every three days? Well, what, what actually happens is that you open uh, multiple stores a week. We'd like to sort of spread them out and open them on Tuesdays as you go through the year. But as you know, construction's a little bit unpredictable, so they, they sort of bunch up on you. And we have days we'll open eight or ten stores and other days that we'll open one or two. In one day? In one day, 
I've gone crazy opening the Grand in one year and trying to get a little bookstore open. And, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But what I found out is I've, I've done a lot of research on Walmart. In fact, here's what I did. I've read all the books on business because Christian ministries, we have to do a lot of business behind the scenes to do all this and to make it all happen. So the Bible says that we're to be good business people. We're to be good stewards. And so I've studied and I, I picked the one company, something in my heart said, boy, this is a success story. This is something wonderful. And so I read about them. I heard about them. And I said, you know, Lord, I really need a businessman to help me. I need to ask some questions about how to make some of the business. Like, I'm a preacher. I don't know all the business things. And so I picked Walmart. And then I said, I'll pick the president of Walmart. And so then I had my office call their home, the glass. Isn't that presumptuous of me? And invite them to come on the show. I had heard rumor that they were born again Christians. I didn't know. Then I found out almost the whole Walmart a hierarchy, or the, well, yeah, I wouldn't call it hierarchy, whether that's not the right term, executive and the company is born again Christians. And uh, so. <clears throat> When, when my assistant, when my assistant called the glasses home, Ruth, his wife, answered the phone, and he said, "Hi, uh, I'm David uh, in Jim Baker's office from PTL." And she started to cry. She said, "God had spoken to me that I was going to be on your program, but we didn't know how. I didn't know how I was going to do it." And uh, I couldn't believe it either. I mean, I believe in miracles, but still, it was, this was a miracle. Here, out of all the businessmen in the world, I picked this man to meet. I said, God, I want to meet him. I've been going after what you want to, want to do in life, and when you're praying, you believe in miracles. And so, called the house, and then God had already gone before us, and Ruth Glass, his wife, is going to be, she's our main guest today, and she's going to be telling her story in a few moments that you won't believe. I didn't know it. I didn't know until after this play. Here I'm wiped out. I've been sobbing. I'm emotionally wiped out. I go backstage, and here we all are backstage, and I introduce the crew to Gavin and Patty and to, to Ruth and David Glass, and then Ruth stands there and says, Jim, da 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 And I, I sobbed. I just broke. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She'll tell you what she told me in a few minutes, so stay tuned. But I am so pleased that you would come, and you're the busiest man in the world you have. How many employees do you have? Right now we have about 115,000 working in the company. And, uh, and they're not employees. They're, no. they're partners, aren't they? Team members. They're all partners in the business, and they're the ones that make it all happen. Do you think that the principles of the Bible really work, and you've applied, I know, so many of them into Walmart, that they are the part of the reason that, that Walmart is a success it is today. You believe in people. God lifts up people. So many principles. Sure. That, that is why the uh, company is successful. Anything else is just short term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's worked great for us, and, uh, and our people believe in it. Uh, we're all a family. We all help each other, and, uh, and the <coughs> Lord's been good to us. Now, is Mr. Walton really the richest man in the world? I don't think so. There are people who say that he is, but, uh, but Sam is a, is a wonderful fellow who's uh, totally unpretentious, and he doesn't know whether he has any money or not, and so far I don't know. <laughs> so, but he's a super guy. They say if you know how much money you are worth, you're not worth very much. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, you mean, he, he, just, he doesn't act like a billionaire? No, he, uh, he works just like the rest of us, sets the pace for all of us, and provides a lot of inspiration. Good man. And uh, you, you were telling the staff, I don't know if I'm going to tell something out of school, he actually owes you $20. He does. He, <laughs> Sam never travels with money. And uh, it, it's never seemed... <laughs> He's going to get you for this, probably. <laughs> never, never, never seemed to be important to him. And... Uh, and, and, but occasionally, uh, uh, one of us will loan him a little money, and uh, uh, we're going to work at getting it back, though. <laughs> we're just so happy to have you here with us today, and, and your lovely life, wife, Ruth. And there's just so many questions that, uh, well, i just just love to ask you, but we've got to get to your wife, because she's our guest today, okay? And uh, appreciate it, and uh, thank you for coming, and, and it's just been terrific. You know, to me, this whole thing has been such a miracle, and 
And uh, I went by to meet him at lunch yesterday. I only had five minutes. That's why my hair is not cut yet. And uh, I spent two hours with him. And God used him to help me because we're reorganizing PTL. And we're restructuring. And we're budgeting. We've been running to catch up with our growth for 11 years. And now we're just going to have to really tighten the belt and structure and all. And everything he said, he don't know it. I mean, he doesn't realize where I was. And we begin to talk. And he answered question after question after mm -hmm. question Thank after question. Lord. And this morning, he spent two hours with all of our managers mm. and gave a, a marvelous speech and lecture to them and then opened up for questions and answers. Mm. And I know God sent oh. him, David Glass, here from Walmart to help us. Because their growth has been just like ours. They started in the small cities and they've gone to the big city. We started in all the little cities of America with our television program. And now we're in, of course, New York and Chicago and Detroit and Los Angeles. And uh, it, it's just exciting that God is ha has his people everywhere. Yes, the, the Lord is moving mm -hmm. in a tremendous, tremendous way. We just praise the Lord for that. Amen. Tammy, you got a song? I do, Jim. And a little, it's, I guess you could call it a Christmas song. I don't know. It's a song for any time of the year called The Wonder of Wonders. Oh. I wish Mary would have sung that last night, too. That was... <laughs> Maybe we'd get her to an yeah. encore. <laughs> and it is the wonders of wonders that, that God loves me and you. Uh, pa Pastor Dorch is sitting over there. Come here a minute. Just uh, stand over there beside uh, Gavin. Uh, She's near you with the mic. <clears throat> let me, let me. I, I have a mic on, okay. so one of you could, could you work, can you work the mic too? And uh, there is, there's something. I just want to say, just before Tammy sings, and we got to move the show faster because we, we get out here and just have fun being with each other. Yeah. I want to, I don't know if you saw the president as he ministered to the families oh. in the, in the you know, terrible it tragedy. Was very we moving. did. We were packing. You have to be the mic. Stand. Yes. We, we were packing uh, to, to fly time, down yeah. here the other day, and it was on, and, and oh, we could feel the pain of the, of the families, plus the president and, and Mrs. Reagan's pain. And I said to Gavin, you know, they didn't have to do that right. one by one. They hugged them as long as they needed holding. It was so beautiful and made you really so proud that, that Ronald and Nancy Reagan are running our country. 248 to every one of those men people. killed. One of yes. the saddest, saddest yes. tragedies in history. And what do you do? Sometimes there's no answers. You say, why God? Why do these things happen? I don't know. But our job is to love and to care. And I must say, I was very proud Yes. of the President yes. of the United yes. States yes. of America. Yes. You know, in America, we have freedom to barb our President. We have freedom to criticize him. But let us also have the freedom to say thank you. And we're proud to have a President that's not ashamed of Jesus Christ, not ashamed of God, and not ashamed to show emotion and love. And he poured on the wine and the oil, as they say, on the Jericho Road yes. to those families. And I don't think there was a greater moment in the history of presidencies <laughs> than that moment. He became a pastor to the nation. He did. Yeah, that's what he, he did. did. Yeah. Yes. And the power of the Lord was right there. And when he did the Christmas special, he, he's not ashamed to say our Savior. He's not ashamed to, to stand for what he believes. And not that we would want to put any other religion down, because we don't. But that's what if our we have a, was based If on, we have a Jewish it? president sometime, I would expect him to stand for what he believes in Judaism and not to be ashamed. That's the great exactly. thing about America. I can worship Jesus Christ in freedom, and every other man and woman can worship whom they please. Well, that was the, the country was founded on that. Right. Yeah, We yeah. must preserve that at all costs. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Reverend Dorch, you, you gave me, you, you read the sports page before the uh, Pentecostal Evangel sometimes. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I think you read that before the front page. I'm not sure. Maybe not. I'm kidding you a little bit. But you're a great sports fan. I can fan. handle it. <laughs> but you're a great sports fan. And uh, you gave me uh, an editorial, and I read it, and, and I was impressed with it. And since you gave it to me, I gave it back to you. Could, maybe you don't have time to read it all. But yeah, well, it's, it's Bob it's, Green. Bob Green, you know, the Chicago Tribune. He's a syndicated columnist here in the United States. And he did something that is so profound. Here's a newspaper man that just came out and said it. And his words, he says, I love this guy, Reagan. Oh. Now imagine that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, that is profound. It certainly is. And he talks, 
He talks about all the things that the people say are wrong with Ronald Reagan, but that he just comes out and said he talks about the variety show that was on last week, I think it was, and Ronald Reagan is there telling the baseball stories that he's told, he says, a hundred thousand times. But then Bob Green just comes out and said, he said, you know, I think the president is great. I like the idea of the president standing up there telling that old, old story. It's terrific. I like that guy in the White House. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and he said he, he said it out, he says, I know yeah. people will criticize me sure. for saying this. But my hat's off to Mr. Green <laughs> and to anyone else. You know, I, I like Jimmy Carter, too. Now, the Republicans will get mad at me. But I, I've met Jimmy Carter several times. I flew with him in Air Force One and laid hands on him and prayed for him when he was the President of the United States. Jimmy Carter's a fine man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, folks, why do we have to tear people down because you're a Democrat or I'm a Republican or I'm a this or I'm a that or I'm a conservative? We don't have to continue right. this in the country. We can differ on political things. But when the man is the president of our country, if we could just get that pride back in our land and care about it and pray for our Amen. country. And all. And uh, I have been so proud of Ronald Reagan right. these last few months. The things he's done, the way he has stood up. And uh, he really, I believe, you know, when I first met him, I met him before he became president. And I spent three, four hours with him. We rolled up our sleeves and, I mean, we talked for hours and hours and hours and hours. And when I left that meeting, you see, you can't, we had a room full of, I think there was oh, maybe five or six other major ministers there with me. And we just, we drilled him. And one minister there embarrassed me. I mean, he put Ronald Reagan on the hot seat. I was embarrassed, but Ronald Reagan wasn't, wasn't even, didn't even, did he move him? I mean, he just talked and kept calm and talking. This preacher's got drilling and drilling and drilling. You know, some preachers can be very obnoxious. But you've uh, noticed, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, including myself. You know, we get we get dynamic and we start yelling and hollering and waving. And somebody's sitting in their house, quiet in their rocker, and they say, "Why is that guy screaming?" You know, and uh, and you know, we do get it carried away because we believe in what we're doing. So we do get obnoxious sometimes. I'll admit that. I'm sorry about that, but I do. <laughs> but uh, that man, Mr. Reagan, before he became president, before he was used to, you know, he put his foot in his mouth more. I liked him real well then, too. I love it when and somebody real important can make a mistake because it makes room for me then because then I know I can make it. Like Peter always encourages me because he always put his foot in his mouth. But anyhow, for hours we sat with Mr. Reagan and talked and talked and talked. And when I left... This is the end of side one. Please stop your machine and turn the cassette... slogan for Ronald Reagan, I would say Ronald Reagan is. Not, you know, it's not what he says. It's not just rhetoric. This man is a good man. This man believes in life. He believes in the godly principles. That is the character of this man. Ronald Reagan is what you see. And it keeps coming out. And I just think... Uh, and I don't get in politics. I don't want to be in politics. But I, I'm, say, I'm not talking politically. I'm talking about a president of the United States who at this Christmas season has stood before this nation and has not been ashamed to have Christmas carols sung, has not been ashamed to light a Christmas tree, has not been ashamed to talk about the Savior. Mm -hmm. And then in the time of great tragedy, he's not been ashamed to cry with those who are crying and laugh with those who laugh. He has truly been a great president and I, I I am honored that I have been able to even meet him but um, well I just thought maybe we ought to say something nice today about That's the president wonderful. because he gets a lot of echo <laughs> that uh, Mrs. Reagan is right there with him I mean there's that Christian support that you read about and hear about that's just the way it should be do you know that this time last year do you know where we were yeah we were invited to the White House now Gavin had been there before when he was on his three-year vacation but I had not <laughs> And so, and, and I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. And <laughs> I don't believe know if everybody me, knows what you just said. Go ahead. Right. But believe me, folks, the <laughs> White do. House looks quite different from the inside looking out, from the, from the outside looking in. And it was at Christmas time, and it was, it was like fantasy land walking into that White House. And we were the first in line in a private room to say hello to the Bushes and the Reagans. And as Gavin said, oh. he's never heard me speechless. I just, you know, I How just... How long have you been back together then? 
Wait about six months. Uh, no, no about, we were let's married see. in June. September, October, November. D three months? You had been together three months. We've been months back we together went three months. Isn't and that I tell yeah. you, it was just a thrill. Would you, you believe? And we got to stop. We got to stop. I, I know. I, I mean, I've worked with them as an but, actor. I could go on for a half hour, but I don't think we should. You know, when Tammy and I, it's no secret, and our book's going to tell it all, it's coming out shortly. Uh, we were separated because of uh, just differences that just the devil just threw at us. Yep. Yeah. But you know, our first date, we started dating just like you guys did. I, I started courting my wife. I courted her. The, 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 yeah, the exactly. Christian therapy team said, you start courting your wife like you did 25 years yeah, ago yeah. or whenever, you know. And um, <laughs> do you know our first date, can you believe the first date was to the inauguration ball of the president, oh, Ronald Reagan. Oh, and I picked her up. She, oh, she looked wonderful. And I mean, it was like, you know, it was like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Here I am dating my wife and we go to the, the inaugural ball and the oh. president and Nancy come sweeping in and I oh. hear it. And, and oh, and everybody was there. I mean, it was uh, overwhelming. And here we were, this turmoil was inside of us. And yet we were dressed up, looked real great. Mm -hmm. Every, nobody really knew all the problems no. we were facing. Mm -hmm. But yet God began, of course, to put us back together. And, Amen. Just like he did you too. Just like he did right. us. God does put things back together. Sure Hallelujah. Does. And that's the wonder. A wonder. Tammy Faye, sing it for us. <laughs> <laughs> As she looks on his face That this little boy Spoke the worlds in their place The stars and the moon Shining brightly on them The earth and the sun Wonders. Oh, how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men, and the wonder of wonders, He died for my sin. wonders as she looked down and smiled that he was her maker as well as her child he created the womb that had given him birth he was As she heard his small cry That this voice had thundered On Mount Sinai His small hand she held So tenderly Had made a right hand Through the mighty Wonders, oh how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men, and the wonder of wonders, He died for my sin.
Oh, the wonder. You know, we are sending out this week a little devotional guide. It's called the P-Tail Devotional Guide, and we're asking folks that can help us with at least a $10 a month gift to do that, and let me send you this devotional every month. I'd love to send it to you, and each month you'll have a new book come, and then you'll have a, a, a sleeve to put the books in that you can have the entire series to save uh, over 365 uh, readings here. And uh, I was thinking, you know, Ruth, it's so nice to have you here. Please welcome Ruth Glass, the wife of David Glass, the president of Walmart. And uh, Ruth, we invited you to come. I didn't really know anything about you. I don't think you realized that because uh, I think you thought I, I knew when I was inviting you because I knew all about it, but I didn't. I didn't know until just a few moments ago, last night actually, the full extent. And uh, I would, you know, someone would look on and say, uh, Ruth, uh, the wife of the president of Walmart, would have no problems. Nothing could ever go wrong because this is a fairy tale story. This is the success story of America. And yet something went wrong. And, you know, you don't understand people. You don't know their hurts. And so it, there's a little scripture in James 4, 6. And on January 15th, I, I write the devotional for that day. It says, a humble spirit, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And... What you don't understand, I think, sometimes about humility is people may look like they're successful, but inside they're dying. Jane Russell was here, and I don't think Jane will mind me saying this, but Jane has gone through a lot, mm -hmm. as she said. She, uh, you know, just about died from, from alcohol and other problems. And it's so easy to say, oh, Jane Russell, that famous movie star, she don't need anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. She's, uh, you know, just leave her alone. She's famous and rich. She don't need to be ministered to. She came, and the number one thing she kept saying, I want to, I need fellowship. Say. Her people had put her in a hotel downtown. She moved. She said, I'm moving to the Heritage Grant. I've got to be here with this Christian. And then she said, she went to camp meeting. And she sat. She said, I've got to be ministered to. Mm. And as she sat there through that whole service uh, as Pastor Crabtree ministered under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and tears streamed down her face through that entire sermon as God ministered to her. You don't understand what humility is, people. I don't even understand it. But a lot of people who you think, oh, look at how proud, look at how they're... They're hurting people. They're putting on a front. They're really humble. They're really broken up inside. And they're crying out for somebody to help. Thank God for the song Tammy sang yesterday. God looks inside, not on the outside. And this is my devotional for January 15th. It's a story I love to tell about the Queen of Holland had been invited to go and speak before the agricultural committee of her country. Instead, she decided to invite the men of the committee to be her special guest at a great banquet in the royal palace. These men of the fields arrived and were seated in the royal banquet hall with the queen herself hosting the event. The table settings were the epitome of elegance, with a wide assortment of silver and crystal each place. One of the farmers, not knowing what a finger bowl was, picked up the small bowl of water and began to drink from it. A little snicker began to ripple through the banquet hall, and the queen looked up and saw what was happening. Then the queen of Holland reached out and with great dignity picked up her own <laughs> finger bowl and drank from it. Mm -hmm. And then I go on to say, I feel this is the attitude Jesus expects of us as believers. That is love and concern. That is caring. That is compassion and humility. This is the way God feels about you and me. Jesus says, I, don't, I didn't come down to condemn you. I came to love you. I came to forgive you. I like what Paul told the Romans. Don't try to act big. Don't try to get into the good graces of important people. But enjoy the company of ordinary folks yeah. and don't think you know it all. Romans 12, 6 in the Living Bible. I believe Paul's advice is still good today. And that's our, our uh, devotional for Jan January 15th. And 
I want to send this book to you. I want you to have it. So just write me and we'll get it out to you as fast as we can. We have them in, in the warehouse ready to go to your home. So please ask for it and please help us to stay on the air. We desperately need your help. I don't want to beg. I don't want to plead. But just please, if you love the ministry, if it helps you all, please support it. You know, sometimes we judge. You would say, boy, to be the President of the United States is a heady and high thing. The President of the United States called me, Jimmy, uh, President uh, Jimmy Carter, and he was a broken man. It was when things had just kind of fallen apart. And he said, Jim, I need prayer. Come and pray. And I went to his private suite on the airplane and laid hands upon that man. Now, you say, there's a heady, high-minded man. No. There was the President of the United States, humble and broken. Don't judge people by what you see. Don't judge them by their position as a movie star. Gavin McLeod, he's that proud-looking captain on the love boat, the most handsome, debonair man. <laughs> but yet his life fell apart. And somebody needed to reach down and say, God loves you. He really does. And here's Ruth, Ruth Glass, basically, who had all you needed probably in life. I did. But yet, even drugs begin to come into your life, Ruth. And, and I, I don't like to embarrass people, but <laughs> I want you to tell us a little bit what was happening. Well, um, you have to know where I came from. Uh, yeah, I like that. What was, I, what was your childhood like? <laughs> My parents were both alcoholics. Mm. I married young to get away from home. Mm -hmm. And I married David, um, which was really the best thing that really ever happened to me. The <laughs> Lord knew. Um, but I was 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our first child when I was 16. Um, David started to school on the GI Bill. There were times when we didn't have anything. There, there was a period of about a week where we slept in the car. He would. The uh, president of Walmart started. No, no, out? not that. Well, yeah. Then. No, I know, but uh -huh. back then, you know, people always think you arrive full grown as president. <laughs> oh, no. You know, full no. grown. You know. <laughs> now, when we got married, I used his high school ring and I turned it around. <laughs> That's cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why uh, didn't you have like a wedding ring. Tell, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we did the same thing. I turned your fingers green, though. Okay. Yeah, Rollers rings. <laughs> But we didn't have a place to stay. I was seven months pregnant, and we slept in the car, and he'd go to the filling station and shave and clean up, and, and he'd go to work, and I'd sit in the car all day while he, uh, while he, while he worked until we had a paycheck to where we could find another place to live. And both your parents were alcoholic? No, no. His parents are, are not. No, your mine, parents? Yeah, mine. Both, that's what I'm, your uh -huh. mother and your father? Yes. And so a lot of people say because the parents are, you, you're destined to be that yourself. Did that haunt you? I wondered. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have the uh, assurance and the self-confidence that I needed. Uh, when David graduated, uh, within a year he was president of a drug company. Um, I was given a prescription for diet pills and I learned very quickly that they gave me the assurance that I needed to meet the professional people that I was supposed to meet, to be socially acceptable and uh, I didn't have it inside. Um, and I leaned on them. And I uh, very quickly became what they called is a, a, a dopey. Uh, you tranquilizers at, at night to get down get to go down to sleep, from the high of the to get down from the high, and then the uppers. And uh, you become immune, so you just take more and more. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, uh, I, I, no one would refuse the president of a drug company's wife uh, a prescription so it was easy for me to get the medicine um, I learned uh, you you take more and more um, people became concerned close friends I went to a doctor he very quickly told me I needed to go in the psychiatric ward not me I said not me uh, my uh, mother died uh, the very following uh, year my sister died oh. Uh, and then two years later, my uh, father died, oh, and I didn't know what to do with that. I didn't have the in, I didn't have the, what it took inside to uh, bounce back from all the hurt. Um, 
how about the success then? Your your husband became so well. He was successful almost from the beginning. Your husband's a worker, True. and uh, work usually brings success. And he's worked True. hard. He did. Could you? Some say, and I I really believe success is sometimes harder than failure. So you knew you knew pain. You knew the the pain of failure. You knew the pain of not having a, even a place to live at one point. But then success was success difficult at times. Um. I, I quickly learned the responsibility of success. Uh, I always felt different. I always felt like I never measured up for some reason. People would tell me I did, but I didn't feel it. Uh, and everything that I accomplished, I couldn't get any satisfaction from it. Uh, it's like I was always striving to, to do better, and I never quite made it. That is the trick of Satan to every godly person, to every human being on earth, really. Yes, it is. The accuser of the brethren. He tells you you're not good enough. I saw Gavin and Patty nodding in your head when you were saying that they could identify. Yeah. You don't deserve it. You don't, you know, and, and this is something that affects so many people. Even when you have success, they'll say, well, that's a fluke. You, you really don't fit in there. Can you imagine that? But not that? only that, Jim, but when you do achieve things, it doesn't bring the satisfaction yes, that you thought it yeah. would. Yeah. Because there isn't any that's real long-term joy. There's a momentary, that's right. it could be, you know, when you get a new ring or something, that's but it's right. not real deep. That's right. Hmm. I, things begin to pile in on us. Um, David was busy. I, our son was having problems. Um, he disappeared for a year. I felt like everything was my fault. I felt I was a bad mother, I was a bad wife, uh, that everything that I had tried to achieve, I had failed in, uh, that the problems we had, we wouldn't have them if, if I had been the kind of person that they all needed for me to be. And I got very discouraged. I, um, after I got out of the, the psychiatry board, I was in there for three months, um, and didn't lean on the drugs, I quickly learned to lean on alcohol. I needed something inside of me mm -hmm. to give me whatever I lacked. And it was always an outside source, like mm -hmm. drugs or alcohol. You got to the point, Ruth, you told me last night, and I was shocked when you said this, <coughs> because you look so successful and you charming and all, and, and we don't expect this, but because but it happens to so many we're so used to it now that it shouldn't have shocked me but i just had a different picture and you said you had gotten to the point where you had contemplated suicide oh i had decided you had decided i had decided um we lived in springfield there's a little town outside of springfield called branson missouri there was a beautiful drive with trees and a lot of bluffs uh, and i used to drive that road and and just think just to get away and I decided that that I was just going to uh, pull the car off and go down the bluff mm. I decided that that would be the best way it wouldn't embarrass my family it, I wasn't feeling sorry for myself <coughs> I just really felt like the, the, I, everything would be better if I wasn't there you know if, if you ever wonder why we are involved with Christian therapy this is why. This is the pain of America. Ruth is being honest with us. Thank God somebody comes out and is well known and, and has stature to say this is the hell. And we are our brother's keeper. We, have, we must. The reason some of the po folks are coming here now is because they're coming to a place of love and healing. And we want to do more in this area and just pray that we'll be able we want to open a, a center here and a clinic to really help people. I, I just wish, Ruth, that we could have had this going then mm -hmm. so we could have, could have helped you because, mm -hmm. you know, shock treatments and things that are going on today are not really the answer. No, they're not. Love in Jesus Christ, That's he right. has the answer. Yeah. Well, then, what happened? How did you come to the Lord? How did I come to the Lord? Um, I walked in my bedroom and I turned on the television one day. And I... I it was, in, it was in a week before I was going to do it. Um, and I turned the television on and, and your program was on. And I thought, they're fanatical. And I turned <laughs> yes, it off. Yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, the next day, at the same time, I turned the television on again. <laughs> I know now it was the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, I thought the same thing. Turned it off. 
The third day, I didn't turn it off. The third day, I stopped. You were talking. It was 10 years ago. It was in the old studio. My. Uh, and I, I began to listen to what you were saying. And you were saying, it's going to be all right. Hmm. God loves you. And God wants to help you. And God cares. And he can take care of every problem that you have. And he, you said, if you will pray with me, God will take care of it. And I wanted to be right. I wanted things to be right. And I wanted help. And I bowed my head and I stood there and I prayed with all of my might and all of my soul. Every word that you told me to pray. <laughs> and immediately after the prayer, you said, and, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it because immediately from the tip of my toes to the top of my head, swirling, cleansing. Oh, praise the Lord. And, and then love. Huh. More love than I could hold inside <laughs> or out went through me, in me, and around me. And I knew instantly that God made it all right, that he was there, yes. that he was real, yes. that he's alive. And he heard me. All right. Then you said uh, that I needed to call. And I thought, oh, no, I can't call. They'll, they'll think I'm crazy. And you said, if you deny the Lord, then he'll deny you. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, I have to do this. I picked up the phone and I dialed a number. And when I did, Jim, there was a second release. A more of a release. And I, it is so important yes, when yes. someone comes to the Lord That's to right. tell somebody. Yes. Sure. All right. The, and then the next thing I did was a friend had given me a, a living Bible, just the New Testament. I ran to that Bible. And for three and a half months, I sit in my bedroom. Just the Lord. Didn't know another Christian. Didn't even watch the program. And the Lord took me through the Gospels. Instantly, I took into my spirit. Instantly, I understood. Mm -hmm. When I didn't understand, I asked. And God revealed to me answers. He taught me to pray. He taught me to confess my sins. He, I, I asked for the gift of faith. He gave me that. I didn't even know what I was doing. Um, he uh, brought my little girl to the Lord. We were baptized at the same time. Led me to a church. I argued with him. I drove around and around that church. I didn't want to go in. I felt funny. And I went in. I was obedient. Because... And I didn't have any reason not to believe the Lord at that point. He had shown me so much. He instantly gave me a, a, a good feeling about myself. He showed me that I am no better and I am no worse. And that love is the most important thing. Yes, yes. And that's how I try to live my life, is loving people. Mm. What a story. Can you imagine... God brought Ruth here for a purpose, to tell somebody right now, don't give up, don't right. commit suicide. You are on the brink of a miracle. Of a miracle. True. See, the devil told Ruth she was on the brink of disaster, kill yourself. God said, no, <laughs> no, I'm going to do the miracle. You see, when you're in trouble and you're hurting, you're in the position to need a miracle. So you don't have to go around saying, I'm on the brink of disaster. No, you're on the brink where God has to come and give you the miracle. I want to pray for you. Now this is a miracle. I did not know Ruth. I thought I was inviting her husband to come here to help me. Uh, to just, I wanted to meet him. I wanted some help with some of the ministerial problem. And I just picked him out of all the men in the world. I decided to pick. And can you believe, I didn't know until after the play last night and Ruth shared, I did not know she was she had found the Lord through this ministry and filled with the Holy Spirit and healed of drugs and healed of alcohol healed of everything and turned totally around for 10 years. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. But God wanted her here today. Yes. God had told her she was coming and then we called. So I think God does speak. People say, well, God speaks. Well, I think uh, maybe yes, he, he does. does. I, don't, yes, he does. I think he speaks in all different ways. And... Uh, I think he may even use, use you doing one thing to cause another thing to happen. 
God knows you. He says he knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows when a little sparrow falls to the ground. He said you're more valuable than, valuable than many sparrows. He loves you. Yes, he does. Let him have his way right now. Father God, I pray. I bind alcohol. I bind drugs. I bind sin. These things that are killing people. Yes. Lord, right now, reach down and touch them. God, forgive them of their sins. Set them free, Lord, as they call upon your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Lord, deliver them. In Jesus' name I pray. As you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he will come in. He will forgive you of all your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Our counselors are here at 1-704-554-6000. Just as Ruth called and, and confessed Christ to somebody else, if I was with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. This is for you today. God loves you. Yes, he does. Tammy, this is quite, quite a story. Yeah, it makes everything worthwhile. It yeah. really does. When I get discouraged, I'm going to think about Ruth. Yes. And it gives you the courage to go on to know what God is doing. Yes. And there's some more roofs out there. And God wants you. God loves you. We must say goodbye for this hour. We'll be back in many cities right after this. And don't forget to write for your devotional guide today. It's off the press. We want you to have it. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for this hour. Guests of the Jim Baker program stay at the beautiful Heritage Grand Partner Center. To make your reservations, call 1-704-544-8100. Eastern Airlines is offering discounts up to 50% off for anyone traveling to Heritage USA. Call and make your reservations today. Call 800-468-7022. In Florida, dial 800-282-0244. If you'd like an audio cassette of today's program, send a gift of $5 and ask for the tape number shown on your screen.